This podcast contains profanity and explicit material from the outset, which may not be suitable for children or sensitive adults. The views expressed are made in humour and are not designed to offend. Now, now sit, sit back and, and enjoy. For this year, well, no, I don't. Well, no, I don't want to talk about it. I just don't want to talk about it, man. <laughs> I just don't want to talk about it, man. Uh, no, so for the last 25 minutes, um, yeah. seven minutes, um, we've been playing Google Street View, yeah, but we didn't find who we were looking for, no, just like you two, <laughs> just like you two, in that, in, in that, in, in that. So, in that song they'd done called Beautiful Day. <laughs> oh, wait, was it Sunday Bloody Sunday? That would have been yeah. funnier, actually. I fucked that. I totally the, fucked that. Streets have no name. Yeah. 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 You know, you know the story behind Sunday Bloody Sunday, don't you? Isn't it the uh not that wasn't no, that's the um this who is the one that ended up killing someone? Like the whole that girl went and shot everyone up? It's not that one, is it? No, that was that no. Actually, you're close though. It's it's it's, a, it's another freeloading celebrity. You know that was Bob Geldof in the Boomtown Rats ah, when yes. they when they sang "I Don't Like Monday," um, ah. but this was um, no, this was U two and Sunday Bloody Sunday, and that song was about the Bloody Sunday massacres that took place in Dublin um, on a Sunday. Um, I can't remember what year. Um, pretty much, the military shot a whole heap of people outside a um, post office in the middle of Dublin, oh, and they did that. yeah, I'm. I, yeah. Uh, oh wait. No. Hold on. Let me get this right because I could get firebombed if I get it wrong. Um, Go on. I got firebombed. There's a bomb in the basket tin. <laughs> um. Yes. Danger on oh, humanity. Oh no, Sorry. So what was the fucking um? That's not what I'm after. Was, um. Come on, you screw me here, mad dog. There are the GPUs. Okay, so no, so um, the bloody Sunday massacre, yes. uh, was in Lon- was in Londonderry, um, uh, in the year nineteen seventy two, there was a demonstration in Londonderry, um, by the Roman Catholic civil rights supporters that turned violent when, unfortunately, the British paratroopers opened fire and they killed thirteen people, and injured fourteen ah. others. But uh, I mean, yeah, quite shit. Yeah. So Pretty anyway, average. that's what. Anyway, that's why uh, you two made a whole heap of money. Ah, huh. yeah, <laughs> yes, that's my that's my fun factoid for the moment. Um, I, I got a I got a burb. Uh, two sex, two sex. Yep. It's chicken wing, chicken wings business. Two oh, sex. Yes, yes, go ahead. Here's one from our sponsors. <laughs> Your eyes like chicken wings. I'm back. Ah, excellent. Oh, I was. Do you know, I was honestly hoping to hear like a tinned ravioli commercial that you'd. Like pull the script out of nowhere for <laughs> that would have that would have been funny. Damn you want to? You want to fucking tell you? <laughs> Try me tin ravioli. Oh, yeah, fucking great. Get meeting. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do you like spam? Oh, I don't either. Uh, <laughs> Too fucking bad. You're getting it for dinner. Oh, uh, actually. Um, I don't know. Have I ever explained the Jaffel story on this podcast? No, I don't think we, we, we've uh, talked about it when we're to- extremely intoxicated. But um, uh, uh, no, yeah. Um, uh, so, but you know my Jaffel story, don't you? You have Do to you? enlighten me because I can I, right. I can recall it, but it's uh, yeah. I know there was a Jaffel story, but yeah. So um, so uh, but when I moved to this um, fragrant nation a couple of years ago. Um, and I met my uh, good darling wife. Um, mm-hmm. We were we were chilling one day, and she's like, "Oh, I'll I'll make you something to eat." I was like, "Oh, okay, cool. What is it?" And she's like, "Oh, it's Jaffles." It's like, "Oh, what?" I'm like, "What the fuck's a Jaffles?" And then she goes, "Right, I'll just wait there." So she goes in the kitchen, she's potting around, blah blah blah. Comes back anyway. Um, 
I get handed a plate with what I can only describe as mm. a toasty. Yes. It's, it's what, what in Scotland, what I would call a toasty. Mm-hmm. It's like you get the bread and then you get like cheese or ham or something and you put the bread together and you put it in the machine that's ultimately just a fucking hot griddle thing shaped in a, in a toast sandwich shape. Mm. Now, she called it a jaffle. So I'm like, what the fuck you want about? What's a jaffle? She's like, it's a jaffle. That's just what it is. It's what it's called. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know why it's called jaffles. Turns out there was fucking tin spaghetti in it. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Fucking tins. How how is tin spaghetti in like a tinned spaghetti toasty? How is that a thing? I I, I just can't comprehend it. My, my mind my mind boggles now. You know, it's one of the re- main reasons I got diagnosed with PTSD. To be yeah, honest, exactly right. <laughs> yeah, um, so, yeah. So I nearly burnt my fucking mouth off ripping into this because I'm just thinking, oh, it's just gonna be a cheese toasty. She's like, no, it's a jaffles. So okay. yeah. Um, yeah, it turns out, yeah, the Australians put, like, tinned spaghetti in Blech. bread and then put, put it in a toasty machine. See, the thing is, see if I was pre-warned that that's what it was going to be. I'd probably mm. been like, oh, okay, right, it's a, it's a spaghetti toasty. I'll give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> but, but also, a spaghetti toasty sounds like something a really immature 35-year-old would make when he's on his own. Yeah. yeah. It's a divorce, divorce father um, Saturday yeah. night evening eating a can of spaghetti yeah. by himself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know what? Fuck it. Let's put some grated carrot on a pizza. Ugh. Yeah, the, no, wor- no, the worst no, kind no, of people. Oh, no, I know. Not do you know what? Do you know what I've been doing whilst we've um, been uh, talking? <laughs> I've been. <laughs> I've been putting uh, grated carrot on a pizza. Have you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm currently divorcing myself. No, I am making. Uh, we've talked about a particular person this evening. Um, Mr. Mad Dog Adrian from Midland. Oh yeah, and I've yes. just been currently making his um his application for the to get sainted um by the Catholic Church. <laughs> Is that an option? Uh, apparently that... so. I'm going to try just, and like, do it. You could you could just put like you could just throw in a throw it in like a like a suggestion box at work. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I will go try out on um some mad dog uh patron saint of <laughs> patron mad saint of, no no but, oh actually yeah I was gonna say patron saint so patron saint of push bikes but yeah patron saint of mad cunts would probably work as well uh and copper <laughs> copper theft <laughs> Hold on, what are we going to do here? And then we're going to animate the shit out of this a little bit. And we're going to try and make it. Are you are you using the computer thing to do a thing for you? No, I'm doing it myself, actually. I'm I'm oh, being all yeah. um, actually being fancy. Oh, no, no, is... I'm not, like, you're not using AI to make like No, no, I'm car- doing a, I'm okay. making a proper one. Um, um, so for the viewers at home, um, a lot of the time, Dave will chat random shit. Um, and then Dave normally takes it to the next level and get, tries to get AI to do it. And the majority of the time, the AI actually does it. And we got some fucking weird things mm-hmm. of the, the funny things that we suggest. But what was that one um, that it couldn't do? It was a Scottish thing, wasn't it? What was it? Remember, it was not too long ago. You were trying to get it to do. It was another probably stupid idea I had for like. And I'm not sure. No, I yeah, for the life yeah. of me, I can't fucking remember it. It was something daft, and we were asking it to do like, uh, produce this, but it was Scottish. It was like it was like a Scottish, you know. Oh, uh, it was one holding the chicken. Yeah. It was the one holding the chicken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just leave it at that. Yeah, that's it. That's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. A- AI can't um, produce pictures of Scottish people uh, holding chickens. Mad cunts and copper. Oh, that's Cooper. So got... <laughs> no, Cooper's even funnier. They'd be like, "Who's Cooper?" You'd be like, "Exactly, yeah, exactly." I'm, I'm Spartacus. I'm Spartacus. Um, I'm gonna blow my snorter box. Two sex. Yeah, but Ugh, I'm back. I've been a bit crook recently. You have, yes, you've had yeah, the I had have. the lurk. I'm, I'm fucking... Yeah, but it wasn't um spicy flu though. I don't think it was. I tested. It didn't come up. Still felt like shit though. 
So are, you, are you still are you still submitting an application for Mad Dog to be a saint? I'm, I'm getting uh, it's. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Hold on. <laughs> I'll add to it. Fuck it. Oh, it's it's more of a um. Uh, we'll download this thing. Hold on. And I'll send you via the WhatsApp. <laughs> Let me download what's an application form. Oh, no, no. It's something else. Uh, same. It's the church. It's a Catholic yeah. church give out application forms now. Wow. Yeah. Well, they, I guess they've got to be... Uh... They definitely give out consent, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> they've got to be a bit more picky on who their employees are these days. Yeah. There's a... <laughs> Here you go, mate. It's currently to the... Um... What's that? Okay, I'll look. All right, let me see. Let me see. Oh, you fucker. See? <laughs> Why does it look like he's been punched in the face? Uh, because he's he's actually <laughs> that video, that picture is him. Um, yeah. Uh, that picture is him squishing up to Nat, uh, Nick Natanui, uh, the footballer. Yeah, yeah. I'll show oh, you. No, yeah, for, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I need to see this. Yeah, hold on. I'll Mad send you the dog, proper one. Nick. No, fuck. I didn't realize that was Nick Nat in the picture with him. Yeah, it's Nick Nat in the oh. picture. Hey, mate, what's going on? Oh, here yeah, yeah, I am. <laughs> I actually, I actually wonder what uh, what footy team he supports. Old Mad Dog. Hmm. It'd be good to know. It'd be good to know who he supports. Mad cats. It's all mad cats and copper. <laughs> the Midland Copper Thieves. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> That's the name of his <laughs> AFL team. <laughs> yeah, I was going to a terrible baseball team name. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you, do you steal copper? Nope, no, no, nope, nope, no copper here, boys. Uh, copper, no, no, yeah, no, it's all long gone. It's up my arm. Yeah. <laughs> Who stole the interior decorating of the change rooms here? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. fucking was <laughs> Mad dog and the fucking like, interior decorating thieves. No, 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 that's no, no, definitely not. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a terrible jazz band, <laughs> you know. Mad like, dog and the jeffles, yeah, an audience with. You know, you know. Oh, right here. Right. I don't know if this is a thing, right? But you know, because like you know, jazz wankers, mm. and I know that's that sounds bad from the outset. Yeah. Just the term, the term jazz wankers, like that could be like you know a new nice name for pedos. Anyway, jazz like jazz wankers, people that just like jazz music and go to watch jazz bands play and stuff. Yeah. Why do all jazz gigs take place really late at night? Because they're not allowed out like, during curfew. You, you, no, like I don't know what it is like, but when I've seen like adverts or stuff for tickets for like um, jazz bands, they all come on like the main act. It's not coming on till like fucking half eleven at night. Yeah, it's concerts. Yeah, you know it's it's like it's like Stevie Trumpets. Can't just fucking hurry up or why go home? <laughs> like I understand you're a talented musician, but fuck, I just want to sleep. <laughs> oh, good night, little Sophia. Good night, child. Oh, I have a story about my um, six-year-old child and a purchase she made recently. A um, purchase? Yeah. What, she, got, she got a credit card, like? Yeah, she got a credit card. She stole it, but it's, it's she's using that less. <laughs> I um, hope it was something, like, really irresponsible that you now have to take care of. You know, like, I bought this body on the internet. Well, you're not half wrong, actually. Oh, um, what was it? What was it? So, uh, I don't know whether you know a thing called uh, a baby reborn. Have you seen of those before? Uh, no. Google no, it. it like... Google, Google it. No. Do you know what? No, that's one thing I'm not touching. I don't want my door cracked and fucking computer seized. <laughs> so, baby reborn is like a real life baby. Um and it, it's not. I didn't purchase. I didn't purchase a baby on the internet. But what I'm trying to say I is that was illegal. I thought yeah. you couldn't do that. Uh, I know not, some people. I know some people allowed. Well, baby reborn is like a um, a, it's like hyper, a toy, a doll, a hyper realistic, um, oh. but like doll. And my daughter, she's six and she loves dollies and she's got lots of different dollies. But this one, she wanted particular. And um, normally they're like anywhere between two to. Looking on the Google, Google is before, but anywhere between $200 and $1,600, depending on how 
Um, Seriously? Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, fuck. Um, and they were all they were the, the same size as a newborn baby. Same size, same weight, same everything. Did, question, question. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do they? Do, and, uh, do, no, do they, no. Do, no. Do they? Do they? Do they come all covered in like spaghetti juice? You know, like when the baby comes. Yeah, out, they, come out they come out. They come out. They come out. You know, like and like past the sauce, and it's just the parcels soak, fucking yeah. soaking wet and stuff. You're like, what? I didn't ask for the placenta with this baby reborn. <laughs> um, it also comes with the shit your wife took in on the bed as well. Yeah, yeah, the meconium. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's just a poo. It's oh, just, ah. it's real bad. yeah. Is that actually what that's? Is that actually what that's called? Maconium, no, that, that's what the baby... Oh, that's uh, the... the oh, no, pro- no, 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 because you know how, like, quite a lot of time, like, a lady giving birth will also just shit as well. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> they evacuate the bowels. And... Yeah, 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 because, yeah. I mean, you know, there's a bit of trauma going on down there. That was an added extra way to pay extra for that part, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh, do you know what would be weird? Like the platinum package, eight grand, and a real woman comes and, like, actually delivers it, like, delivers it. <laughs> I do not want my normal Australian post gentleman <laughs> delivering a baby literally at my front door because that shit would be all weird. <laughs> oh, come in, Brian. <laughs> I need you to sign for this box. So hurry up because I need to use the bathroom. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway. But anyway, no. sorry. Anyway, uh, anyway. So so it's a it's a fake baby thing. Yeah. So um, Ella arrived the other day, um, and Ella's been getting fed before. Sophia gets fed, so Sophia will feed the baby. Um, Sophia's yeah. a six-year-old. Uh, and mm-hmm. then she goes, Dad, can I take it to school to show the class? I'm like, sure, no worries. So mm-hmm. she holds baby and carries it into class, and everyone's, oh, look at this baby. Oh, this is Ella, blah, 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 blah. And I said, look, we're not taking this thing. Um, by the way, I didn't spend 400 to $1,600 on this thing. I um, I, I reached yeah, no, out, to, I reached out to my, gen- my general friends at Timu, and it was fine. <laughs> I was going to say no, no. You didn't spend six hundred dollars. Your daughter spent six hundred of your dollars on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's got so many. <laughs> but no. So I uh, took baby. I said, "Look, you're not going to leave baby here. I'll take baby home." And you sort of left with this. I was left. I left a classroom and walking out the front of the class, going, "How do I hold this fake baby?" Uh, walking out the classroom. So initially, I held it in my arms like you would do a normal baby, and everyone's sort of looking at me yeah. as I'm walking through. And I got bored, so I started held it by its chest out in front of me. And all these parents were looking at me going, what the fuck is he doing with the baby? And I held it sort of more like by the top of its head as I'm walking down the... Uh, <laughs> like, a, like a rugby ball, like yeah. how you pick up a rugby <laughs> Yeah, uh, like you'd be grab a glass of wine at the top. And then as I yeah, get to the car, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're all going, looking at me going, what the hell's going on here? And I just threw it inside the, um, the front seat of the car. <laughs> And got in the car and drove away. And I realized that <laughs> I was wondering why they were looking at me all weird. And then I realized that I probably looked like I had a, um, a non-moving newborn um, throwing it, <laughs> carrying it out. Look, I should be carrying a wine glass or alternatively yeah. like a, carrying a bag full of dog shit. So Yeah, yeah. Is, is, is that guy just violently assaulting a baby? <laughs> Someone could should call the police. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, nah, 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 fuck it. I'm going to put it on community Facebook. <laughs> That because that's what people do. Mm. Fucking annoys me. Mothers of insert suburb here. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. Mm. I see the man today that might be struggling with his newborn. How <laughs> should I approach him and ask yeah. him if he would like help? <laughs> the baby looked motionless. There's something wrong. <laughs> yeah. You should have called the police, hun. Oh, no, I don't like to pry. <laughs> Uh, right, don't get me started on community Facebook because I'll be here all fucking night. Yeah, that'll be literally the whole episode. Obviously, we've talked about it before with the old um, yeah. person who didn't pay for their burial, uh, burial plot and they had to, everyone turned up for the funeral and they went there a couple of episodes ago, the morphine and coke yeah. or whatever it is. So, <clears throat> yes. Yes. Um, yes. But no, so that's my um, weird purchase by my six year old um, order. It came in here. So, if you, those of you playing at home, playing. Timu Bingo at home. It was a decent enough quality to play around with. So it's in for her, not me, because that'd be weird. But uh, it fits uh, newborn size clothing as well as um, it has a, oh, wow. comes comes with a bottle and some nappies and yeah, it doesn't change itself. So 
And also doesn't shit itself because that would be good. I was going to say, it's good to say, yeah, I'm not fucking. If it doesn't shit itself, I'm fucking why are we buying this? You mm, wanted, but, you, uh, hello, six year old. You wanted the doll. You wanted to look after it. So I've got you the fucking, the realest equivalent possible. This is going to keep you up all night and shit. And you have to clean up after it. Well, my daughter's doing, um, as one of her subjects at school, she's year 10. So she'd be what? Mm. Uh, she's 16 this year. Just to, just to clarify, not the six year old. No, no, not six year old. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She has to do, like, one of them is doing childcare and they have to take a child home with them. And the, t- the ch- no, like a baby child, but, but it's got all the internals are all like, um, it screams, it gets up, it has to be tended to in the middle of the night. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, but it cries and it, it will cry until you've done a particular thing, like a proper baby does. Mm. Um, except you could probably put that thing in a bucket of water and it'll probably solve the pro- same problem. But it's, um, yeah, so she has to do the same thing. You know, they still get dollies at age 16, even though she doesn't want to do the subject. It's more, she has to do it or part of her, I don't know what curriculum it is. It's not like a you know, teen pregnancy is not a, a curriculum choice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this one's called drug addiction. <laughs> Oh, everyone pick up the everyone pick up the crack pipe. <laughs> You've had sex, Ed. Now have drug Ed. Let's go. Um, <laughs> yeah, that should be quite an interesting idea. You know, like you can put beer goggles on to get. Um, there's ways to. Oh yeah, to see what it's like when it, when you're drunk yeah. and like try and drive. Yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. See, this is what it'd be yeah. like if you're drunk at school. We put the beer goggles on, and try and do a class at school. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, here's he, here's twenty mils of cat. I mean. See you in a week. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> yes. I was trying to explain oh. ketamine ketamine to my um uh I'm talking about my kids here, but uh, to my twelve year old son, he came up in a song he was listening to, which you know, as you do. And I was trying to explain to him there's horse tranquilizer, but people seem to take it as a recreational drug. Well, not so recreational because it mm. cooks you, but um yeah, it's uh hold on, we got any Meeting time. I've oh, got nine minutes left on our meeting. Um, oh, wow. Really? Yeah, man. How, much, how long have we done? And this is, uh, I can't even tell. Um, oh, it's a 40 minute meeting. So we've already done 30 minutes um, of talking shit about Mad mm. Dog. But um, yeah, so uh, I was trying to get him explain ketamine to him. I haven't taken ketamine. I don't plan to. But um, yeah, but hey, when in Rome. Um, yeah, why not? Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so I was trying to explain to him what ketamine was, and I don't think he understood the concept of being this 12 of what horse tranquilizer will do to a human. And it's um, mm. make you go sleep, you go bye bye for a period of time. So a long period of time. Um, but I guess obviously, I don't know whether you want to. Did you have an intro or anything? Because we haven't even introed the. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. Huh. Um, <laughs> but the first line li- re- written on my notes here tonight mm. says, also, <clears throat> we need a shit tank emptied. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's just got... a line that I've, re- I've written in here. Um, <laughs> we've got a big tank full of shit in the garden, and it needs emptied. <laughs> anyway, wel- welcome to episode... Um, 24. What was it? To episode 24 of the uh, three, li- three Little Pigs podcast. Uh, blah, 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 um, joining joining me tonight here is Dave. Hello. Um, or sh- should I say, joining joining Dave here tonight is me. Um, I have a shit tank that needs emptied. And, and that's sort of sexual term. He's not talking about his asshole. He's talking about. Oh yeah, no, tank. no. This yeah. is this is not like a romance thing. This is there is <laughs> literally a tank full of shit next to my house. Hi, my name's Brian. I have a shit tank that needs to be emptied. I love to hear from all the <laughs> single ladies in the area. <laughs> do you know that's kind of how the um like because i obviously had to get in touch with a couple of shit tank emptiers and like ask how much it costs to empty the shit tank yeah um they're actually quite quite polite to be fair because i love scat <laughs> well, that's the problem yeah oh hello sir it's gonna cost you uh about this much money um to empty your shit tank um, if your shit tank's really full it co- oh yeah apparently it costs like 30 cents a liter more like over the standard, um, like a 90, 91 versus 95 unleaded. 
Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, it's like, it's like oh, can we afford super unlighted this week? Uh, <laughs> we only drive a Camry. You know, we probably yeah. just probably not need to. Um, yeah. Just so apparently, the it's like, up. yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So apparently, if it's like really full of poo, um, they gotta like it costs more to get rid of it. Wow. Um. So yeah, so there you go. So uh, next week, actually, I've got a shit tank emptier coming to empty my shit tank. If he brings out just a, a straw, like a, he sits at the top for a good couple of hours with a straw, you need to call somebody. <laughs> it's the, just a guy with a face mask and a small shovel. <laughs> and a, where's your shit? Where's your, where's your shit tank, mate? And a 40 gallon <laughs> drum that's burning the shit as he pulls it out the tank. <laughs> oh, fuck it <laughs> out. Just a just a wheelbarrow, and he's just he's just he's just throwing it in the back of a transit van. He's just fucking. <laughs> this is what I asked oh, for. You, you want a yeah, cheap? I'll give you a cheap. <laughs> you want a fifty bucks? You come and empty the full tank. You just need you just need to supply him with twenty liters of diesel so he can get home. Oh, and he's here using the uh, about the petrol siphon to get the. I'll get the last little water bits out at the bottom. And he's got an apprentice with him. <laughs> it's, just, it's just. I'm sorry. This, uh, this visually, this is very funny to me. Yeah, it's just like, just like, just like ah, we don't need any of those machines. We're nah, men. We're real yeah. men. Open the van, mate. Open the van. <laughs> <laughs> Open the van. Move your lunchbox. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Side. Just like a, just like a wooden, a wooden panel, like the wooden panel vents on the panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just like, like you say, like this, just like there's just like fucking septic sewage slowly seeping out the creases. <laughs> oh, I should have emptied from the last one, but hey, look, it's Friday <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> you sure you don't want me to park on the street, mate? <laughs> Uh, no, mm. but for those playing at home, as we're talking about a septic tank full of uh yeah. human feces, not a just a barrel full of shit in Jamie's back garden. Well, it is, but it's <laughs> well, well it's technically, technically, yeah, yeah. By, de- by definition, that is what it is. Yeah, dictionary definition states shit f- covered or shit filled, yeah. uh, container yeah. in back tank. of garden. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, do you know they're actually quite a clever wee system? Um, it obviously uses um, your poo and hmm. the water from your house. And everything, everything from our drains goes in there, and mm-hmm. then just like the bacteria in the poo eats, like eats itself or eats everything, and the loo roll and stuff, and it breaks down, and then it forms like a, um, it forms like a solids and fats layer on the top, and then there's liquid underneath, and that liquid fills like a Guinness, one... like a Guinness. Yeah, actually, yeah, inverse the color of a Guinness. <laughs> Um, kind of looks. Uh, no, actually, no. It's Maybe probably it's... more like an actual pint of Guinness, yeah. color wise. Um, and then yeah, the 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 liquid, the watery bit, um, just kind of transitions to the next tank. Um, and then that comes out of what's known as a leach drain. So it just slowly, um, seeps back into the ground and everything around it, and just yeah, rejoins nature <laughs> until it gets too full, it can't go anywhere. Until it gets too full and it comes back up through the uh, drain in your bathroom. Yeah. So you're not having when playing you... shit battleships. Um Do you know, thankfully when that happened, it wasn't poo water, it was just the bath water. Cause luckily the because the drains are on like two separate sets of pipes. So ah. the poo the poo is on one set and the everything else is on the other set. And thankfully hmm. it was the bath water. So the bath water couldn't go anywhere further. So it backed up in the pipes and that's why the house flooded ah right yeah so, so th- thankfully it wasn't poos coming back up because that would have been fucking bad but i have heard horror stories of that happening to people oh yeah because i had a joke to make that wasn't to be recorded so i'll tell you that later we can um, say it now just cut it out cut it no, out no, it's no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'll, t- I'll tell you after. Um, but one thing I did. So, um, for our listeners at home, again, um, <clears throat> it was only 
yesterday, um, Davros suggested to me, oh, let's do a podcast. And I'm like, fuck it, let's do a podcast because I've got fucking time tonight. Um, and then we're texting each other today. We're really excited during the day. We're like, oh, yeah, can't wait, can't wait. And then um, I was at the car park at Dan Murphy's, and this is where I got the idea, uh, Davros, because oh. um, <laughs> and I just randomly um, text Davros saying, current status, violently aroused, evenly tempered. But this, like, it's been playing on my mind ever since I sent that, right? And in a good way, kind of. Like, is this, like, you could you kind of use that phrase for maybe, like, the description of a new whiskey. Mm, or, or a perfume. Like, you know, yeah, or a perfume, right. But then I thought, cereal. As in uh, milk <laughs> milk in the morning cereal? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it's rest, like, but it's special like, K, like, all brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cocoa pops. Violently arose, evenly tempered. Tastes like a chocolate milkshake, only fucking crunchy. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. Corn flakes. Fuck flakes of corn. <laughs> but you know, like, so then I thought, be like, this is a fun idea. Cereal adverts, but it's voiced like you know, like alcohol or a car advert. Mm, you know, mm. the new, the new BMW M thirty three. You know, um. I, I don't know, like leather seats, you know, things like that. But then it's just breakfast cereals. Subway sandwiches, mildly aroused. <laughs> <laughs> but don't want to talk about it too much because that's what happened with um, old mate Jared, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jared got AIDS and not not those kind of AIDS, as hmm. South Park funnily described and dealt with in one of their episodes. They've covered this topic. We have um, multiple times. Oh, no, 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 South Park have um, Jared getting AIDS. Ah, right. Oh, fixing a bowl. Um, oh, you fixing what? No, I was just, I was finding a picture of cornflakes. <laughs> oh. Add it oh, to my on. list. Hold on. No, yeah, okay, right. I'm just going to send you another one of cornflakes. Um, it's a cornflakes derivative. Cornos? No, 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 no. <clears throat> No, no, stand by, stand by. Standing by. Oh, can I keep even save it? Keep, keep, keep standing by. <laughs> keep talking to the kids. Uh, what? Subway. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Fucking what? You heard me the first time, boy. <laughs> we we eat Subway. <laughs> eat fresh or eat fresh or fuck off. <laughs> right. That's, how, that's, that's how, a, a violently aggressive. Um, ad campaign. Um, right. Have our sandwiches finally aroused, but pleasantly clean. <laughs> you want fries with that? Fuck you. Yeah, you can <laughs> fuck your fries. Come here. Um, I'm going to have to copy just... that exactly what you said. So, um, where that, is it? What did I say? Oh, no, I'm going to copy your word for word. Uh, violently aroused, yet, but evenly. Even, no, no, it was, just, it was violently aroused, evenly tempered. Try, try our new wheat bix. <laughs> um, so I just sent you a, a, a picture if you want to check the face space. Yes, or front bum as we like to call it. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm, I'm going to remove that off there in case my kids... <laughs> in case your child walks past. <laughs> remove. Yes. Hey, that's Mr. Smith from down the road. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make that in all caps, well, yeah, because that's gonna be all caps. <laughs> what violently aroused, evenly tempered? Yeah, it it does like to me though. It does sound like it might be a decent description for a whiskey. Mm. You know, I'm gonna make that red. <clears throat> um. So yeah, it was a bit of a thrown thrown together episode tonight. Mm. I think. Mm. Um. Uh, we decided, yeah, do you know what? Fuck it. Send it. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, on a uh, completely separate note, a bit of a throwback to yeah. uh, our one of our previous episodes before we get into some of our topics. Um, the COVID-19 stuff, it's all now becoming a bit unraveled. Um, that uh, Anthony Fauci, who was the head of some sort of disease control shit in the States, former, has come out and said that all the six-foot bloody distancing and wearing masks wasn't actually based on any clinical trials or any scientific basis, but he just, it was what he thought 
was potentially going to help. And we were forced said, to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did see that, but he done like the most Donald Trump thing ever. I don't know. I might have said that. I can't remember. I can't remember saying that. Somebody might have said that. Did they mm. say that? Did I did I say that? They could it could have been said. I don't remember. You're asking if, me something from five five years ago. Every developed country in the world goes, Yep, they're doing yeah. it, so we're gonna do it. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it, the the brainchild of it's just I mean like two guys in a radio station just like fucking let's just start broadcasting these tips, pretend we're another country. Just hmm. like, yeah, fuck it, yeah. You guys should totally like you gotta stay six feet away from each other. <laughs> Don't say it, don't say it. <laughs> Start hoarding toilet paper. <laughs> you know, like that. Just that's what I imagine now. Yeah. You know, like fucking yeah. That was literally throwing uh fucking a dart at a dartboard of ideas and went, oh, that'll do. And yeah, so it's now come back to uh bottom in the ass because it's in front of Congress, so it's not like it's a hypothetical. Yeah, she had to give evidence in front of Congress and see whether he was full of shit and ball accounts yeah. looks like he he may have been a Nice enough bloke, but he may have gone along with the mess, but fuck me dry. He's, um, yeah, he, sh- he should have just took the Donald Trump approach, shouldn't he? Yes, well, no, when I heard COVID was coming, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to invest. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> just like, you know, just something like that. Like, mm. I imagine that's probably what was going through his mind. He, he probably made a shit ton of money off COVID, but it, it's like we got a right, you know. one of our um episodes actually got a COVID warning on Spotify because mm-hmm. we just said it was a flu. Which it is. It was. It, is, it, it is was a flu. flu. Still is. <laughs> Influenza. Yeah. Flu is in the. It's in the word. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. Fucking Jesus. Mm-hmm. But no. So we got a, we got a COVID warning saying just make sure for fat checking. I'm like, well, it's fine. We didn't say anything that wasn't at the time. So, but yeah, a bit of a throwback there. Everything's starting to un- 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 unravel. Um, has come unravelled, and um, yeah. <clears throat> but um. Did you want to kick into your uh, topics, young Jamie? Oh, yeah. I went off on a tangent. Sorry. What I was going to say earlier Mm. (laughs) was that I have some topics tonight, um, but they're technically Dave's topics. I've just snipped them so we can do them tonight. So uh, credit goes to Dave for the brainchild of the following presentation, which is going to be it's going to be like a D minus, maybe an E plus. Um, I don't even know if do you get E's in um in school school things. I don't know. Anyways. They're about thirty bucks a tablet, but yeah, you can get E's in school. Fuck, I, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, did so, not even think of that. Dr- that's a drugs reference. Yeah, you're not. You're a naughty boy. <laughs> get him in you earlier. E's. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> see if I was a low level drug dealer, and there was like people that this is just a hypothetical, obviously. <laughs> And there was people that wanted to buy drugs off me, and they, I just knew for the fact that it's the first time they were ever doing drugs, right? Mm. Say, no, no, you got, you got to stick this up your arse. Mm. Like this is like, this is like, this is like butt ease. Like, it's totally, you know, just for fun. Yeah, I'd like, make it like it's a Pepto Bismol. <laughs> so when they shoved it up, they they took it. It literally just foamed yeah. out the back of their ass. So it's fine. It's, it would be good. It's, it's a fucking whole bud of weed just trying to get it up. <laughs> yeah, this is not working. Oh, it's a fucking. I don't feel stoned. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, my my arse is hungry though. Yeah, exactly right. I'm fucking. <laughs> oh, right. I'm getting <laughs> I'm getting carried away. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. Um. Anyway. Um. Oh, oh fuck. Um. Yes. Okay. Right. Um. So imagine the scene, Dave. Okay. Davos. Im- imagine the scene. Hmm. People. Pe- people. Yeah, people, you've got that scene. <laughs> I, can, I can see people, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, can you? Oh, yeah. well, you got to find the doctor. Uh, 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 no, 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 no. Imagine, sorry, imagine the scene. Mm. People going about their daily business. Mm-hmm. Bing, bing. Oh, my phone's went. Oh, I've got to have a look. Have a browse on my phone. Does anything sound not natural or normal about that? No. No, it sounds yeah. perfectly normal. Yes. Yeah. So just about anywhere, a scene like this would be mundane. But this is what is happening in a remote indigenous village in one of the most isolated stretches of the planet. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So my references are a couple of um, news things I found online. I really didn't have the time to take them down. Um, So this is just cut and thrown together. Hmm. Like a pie last minute. Last minute pie. (laughs) That's a new new recipe I've got to work on. Anyway, um... The Marubu people, 
have long lived in communal huts scattered across hundreds of miles along the Itui River, deep in the Amazon rainforest. They speak their own language and take ayahuasca t- to connect with the forest spirits. So they've preserved this way of life for hundreds of years through isolation. And some villages can take up to a week to reach. But yeah. since, since September 2023, the Marubo, of all things in the world, have had high-speed internet thanks to Elon Musk. So the 2,000-member tribe is one of hundreds across Brazil that are suddenly logging in with Starlink satellite internet service from SpaceX. Ah. So Elon Musk's private space company. Um, since its entry into Brazil in 2022, Starlink has swept across the world's largest rainforest, bringing the web and the internet to one of the most last offline places on Earth. Better Just internet than me, the fuckers. It's fucking better internet than us. Yeah. We're on the NBN. Jesus. Yeah. Um, so just nine months after Elon Musk's Starlink connected a reclusive Brazilian tribe to the internet, the members of the tribe have been divided due to a very unusual reason. Pornography. <laughs> so re- dum, reportedly... Dum, dum. Anyway, um, reportedly the elders of Brazil's 2,000-member Marubo tribe are angry because after getting the internet, <laughs> the young ones became hooked on pornography and social media. <laughs> Perfect. Accordingly, yeah, <laughs> accordingly, the tribe has very specific rules and customs. Um, the conservative, sorry, the conservative group doesn't normally allow their members to even kiss in public. But mm. now, with the access to porn, pretty much, the elders are worried that the age-old customs of the tribe will be impacted. <clears throat> so, besides, do you know what th- this bit here, right? This bit's quite a shame. So, besides porn and social media, um, the tribe are also dealing with other issues, where the youngsters are getting exposed to scams, misinformation, and violent video games. Um, and so from now, the leaders have decided to limit internet availability, um, and they're only going to switch it on for two hours in the morning and five hours in the evening. And on Sundays, the tribe members will have access to the internet for the whole day. That's like prison. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, no, but I think that's kind of like shit. Like, you know, is there a group of scam artists going, wait a minute, fucking look at this internet traffic down here? <laughs> yeah. It's what's now, what's, what, um, yeah, what was the old school scams we used to do? Yeah. Hello, my, my name is Prince... Joffrey, I am a Nigerian prince. <laughs> Send well, me all well your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You, know. Um, you know, but that's a shame, like, you know, getting exposed to scams. I guess, though, probably being exposed more to misinformation might be the issue. Hmm. You know, because that, like, being such... I mean, I can't even imagine jumping into the internet now for the first time. If you th- think about what they did with, like, War of, the, like, War of the Worlds, when they first put on the radio, they thought it was a real thing. So when uh, when Orson Welles was talking about it, going they're coming, they can hear them being blah blah, all that sort of shit on the radio, everyone shit yeah. themselves. So imagine hearing Godzilla's coming uh, across the internet, yeah. and it's blowing up places, and they're coming to Brazil, or there's a tsunami coming. They watch Shark- Sharknado for the first time and realize mm-hmm. that there's, or watch Jennifer Lopez and Anaconda. It's because it's obviously relevant to where they are, and there's a large, yeah. even though they probably fought snakes bigger than that. Um, but it would be it would cause some detrimental harm to these young marubu men for sure yeah, just... but even <clears throat> but even like you know like oh yeah we were just looking at this thing and then all of a sudden we're watching a terrorist cell beheading all these people <laughs> it's like how what the fuck how do you explain that how do you, you know how do you yeah. Yeah, the the Taliban have got um, himself a nice uh a cell yeah. out in the marubu bloody <laughs> marubu yeah, community well, exactly. yeah. Exactly, you know, exactly, yeah, join, join, join our way of thinking and, uh, you know, you will be great. Anyway, um, back to the Marubo tribe itself, though. Interestingly, in 1975, the documented numbers were only 397. Oh, but by, so... by, 19, by 1978, it was 462. And by 1985, 594. So they'd be Which fucking. People... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's quite a lot of humping going on. Um, I did read another thing somewhere. I didn't include it in this because it was going to take too long to include the whole thing. However, um, in the Marubo tribe, they're pretty much set up into like um, g- w- the groups is probably the best term to use it. But like you've got like a, a familial group. Yeah. And you, so pretty much what they worked out is biologically you belong to your mother's um, familial group. 
And yeah. if you are to if you are to marry or to like go with someone like to have a partner, that partner can't be from the same group. Oh, so well. they did this. So yeah, like they obviously got their brains together way back when and said, right, well, we can't obviously have inbreeding and all this stuff. Um, you know, way back when. So they decided that this was a logical thing to do. So yeah, so that's what they do. So you can't obviously marry someone in your um in your familial group. So they encourage, you know, the young people to meet people from other groups. Which so is quite the, cool. The, it's, it's pretty much to... they're better than the bloody uh, English royal family because they're all uh Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, King yeah. Sausage Fingers. Yeah, and um yeah. his cousin, whatever it is. But no, it's Yeah. Oh, oh that's good. Well, at least they've got some sort of uh mm. Yeah, some sort of standard. They're not obviously unless they've realised after years of uh, tribal sp- experiments, they realise that all the um, all the yeah, all the they, children, yeah, children. Be, yeah. <laughs> I won't go be. into it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, right. Okay, we won't go. We won't go into what we were probably going to say. But yeah. let's tone it down for the kids. Mm. Um, it's quite a logical method of thinking mm. to understand, like, and and like for for people or for man mankind to understand, right? Well, we can't do this because you're just gonna like produce issues, yeah, in yeah. babies. You know, you're gonna produce babies with issues. So therefore, let's like you know stop that by doing this. Yeah, it's um, a so yeah trial and error. I thought that's yeah, I thought that was pretty cool, and it's probably happened over centuries. Mm. It's not happened over ten years time. It's happened no. over. Like you know, centuries of this, um, you know, Trump. the Rubo people, yeah. his existence. Um. So yeah, um, some of the elders, um, have been quoted to say or quoted, translated, quoted. Um. So getting the internet has changed the routine so much. It was detri- It was detrimental. Um. And that even come from a tribe member who ended up spending decades out of the tribe, so in the outside world, and was actually pushing for internet access to back to the tribe. Um, because obviously felt it was a benefit to the people. Mm. Um, and then obviously was quoted saying so in the village, if you don't hunt, fish and plant, you don't eat. Yeah. Which is you know, fair enough. But yeah. obviously the logic the logic to them, you know, saying we should have the internet, I guess, would be Doordash. You know, we yeah. But mm, <laughs> fuck it'd be expensive. Eight thousand dollars. Oh wow. Yeah. It's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad. Uh to be fair, I can't even get DoorDash when I live. So. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. hey, you also um, can't get you also can't get delivered uh, fucking Starlink. Uh, yeah, I know. Free of yeah. charge. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I would like Starlink. That'd be pretty cool. Mm, mm, would be nice. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and then all, but also some of the tribe members or the elders are saying that they too don't want to see the internet disappear. Um. So again, that's why they imposed the limits on what can be accessed. Um, and that they want the young people to maintain their traditions. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, one of the tribal leaders said it's, it's just they're, they're very upset because they, the young men um, ended up working out how to watch porn <laughs> on the internet. And, and play, and play and first-person shooters as well, wasn't it? Definitely all on Fortnite. Yeah. Definitely on Fortnite. Um, yeah, so, yeah, to, to end that... Um, a respected Marubo shaman once predicted a handheld device would connect the tribe with the rest of the world for the good of the people, but then warned in the end there would be war. But uh. for now, tri- tribal leaders agree internet access has brought more benefit than harm. And even if it wasn't true, there's no going back now. We can't live without the internet, they said. So there Stupid. we go. <laughs> and fun fact, there are all their yeah. surnames of everybody in the tribe are Marubu. So every yeah, single one of them. Yes, is is Marubu apart from apart from D's? D's who? D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I had to have that one. I knew it was going yeah, like, well, D's Marubu. What thanks. are we doing here? Yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, yeah. man. Because yeah. you know that'd be funny. Like that'd be funny first time. Like imagine, like oh god, all the stuff that we've grown up with the internet. Like imagine seeing that now and, and realizing how funny that was mm. back when. Two girls, one cup. That the man with the glass jar. You know these things. Yeah, yeah first yeah, time. Know, like that's just so funny. It meets meat spin. Like, oh, guys, <laughs> you should definitely go on meat spin. How funny would that be to bam up first time users to the internet now? Uh, with lim- l- lemonparty.org. dot org. Oh fucking hell! <laughs> just you like, hey, let's make some blueberry muffins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're running. We've only got waffle mix. Um. Blueberry oh, fuck mix. yeah, it was waffles. It was yeah. waffles. Damn yeah. it. Fucked it. Fucked it. <laughs> fucked it. Fucking fucked it. Like the Marubo tribe fucked their internet. Yeah. 
literally. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's pretty cool. But I did see some pictures. Um, because a lot of the articles I was reading, like it made it made the Marubo tribe sound quite primitive and stuff. Mm. But like, like the majority of them have phones and stuff. Oh. Right? So they're not they're not that much of a primitive people. They just weren't connected to the like the internet as such. Yeah, and then like, I had... you know, there's because there's yeah, there's a lot of pictures of like the younger um, people in the tribe have like with just iPhones and shit. Oh. So I think there's a there's probably a lot more integration with um, the Western world or the you know the first second world than the articles are making out. Because the when I first read it, like it's like oh, they literally just oh, here's some people that have lived in the rainforest for you know thousands of years. Here's Starlink. Like it's not the first thing you probably exchange. Like I found, I found but, this photo of um, the actual tribe, obviously the tribe with the Starlink set up, and it's literally a. Uh, I'll send it to you right now, but it's literally a Starlink antenna on top of a wooden post in the middle of all these grass huts, like standing up in the yeah. middle of everything. So yeah, yeah, because you have to. Starlink's got to go up high. It's got, it's got to, it's got to feed the other satellites. Mm, Six thousand satellites. Don't you know? Ah, right. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this is going like this is going a lot further than I expected. Tonight, yeah, to be a fair. lot. Yeah, it has. it's got a lot longer than I. Um, but again, it's good. We've uh, blow out some of the cobwebs. We haven't done a mm. one for. We haven't done one as a even a a duo or even a. A trio for, or duo at least for like since probably f- three, four months now. So yeah, we we haven't had a sixty nine in a while. No, no. What uh, and we haven't had a threesome in a long time. Uh, chicken fried rice. Yeah, um, it's a sixty nine. Right? Um, oh, is it? No, I, th- I no. thought it was. Um, I, th- I thought it was shrimp and black bean sauce. Yeah. Uh, the meal with a view. Um, <laughs> with yourself. Dinner for two with the hairy view. Yeah, yeah that's. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, Ooh. Anyway. Anyway. Anywho. Anywho. Um, I thought I'd better kick off with my topic. If you're happy with that, man, just to get into it, because it's 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 a bit, uh, it's not girthy, but at least it, it's a it's a decent topic, and it's I won't light heart in it, but it's she's a bit a bit of a a shit one for people. But I, I found some interesting things out. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to start letting you know that she's not that big, but she's a bit girthy and it might be a shit one for people. Have you said that before to anyone by any no. chance? <laughs> no. <laughs> not out loud. Shit for some people, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. Ah, to be young and in the dating scene. Uh, uh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> sorry, carry on because this one's a fucking killer. Literally. Literally. Okay. Um, okay I, I know no, some no of more, our no more jokes. No more jokes. No, no. <laughs> Serious. Um, yes. Some of our American listeners will have this thrown down their throat. Uh, this particular oh, hey, easy now. Um, yes. Thrown down their throat whenever a particular school shooting or some sort of firearms thing pops up. But I wanted to give people a little bit of a reason why um, this all happened. Um, and today I'm going to talk about one of the darkest days in Australian history. Uh, a day that not only shattered the tranquility of a small town, but also transformed an entire nation's approach to gun control and public safety. This story, of course, is the Port Arthur Massacre. I was going to say something bad, but I'll say no. This story is this is the story of the Port Arthur Massacre. Do you know, well, I was really good. I was really going to jump in as well. <laughs> trying, I was just going to like shout out the day the day that Steve Irwin died or something, right? At the, yeah. But then I thought, no. Nah, do you know what? I'll let. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not because it's not. It's a bit of a sensitive subject, I think, and it's still oh. quite. It's still quite sensitive in Australia, and it, you know, like you said, it's one of the. Well, it is. It's the leading cause as to why the gun laws change so dramatically, mm. and yeah. you know, even even now they're still rallying to change those gun laws even more. Yeah, especially um, after some recent bits and pieces, especially in Western yeah. Australia. But um, but uh, on yes. on on April twenty eighth, nineteen ninety six, the picturesque historic site of Port Arthur in Tasmania became the scene of an immeasurable horror. Port Arthur, once a penal colony, um, is a serene tourist destination known for its haunting beauty and historic significance. But on that fateful Sunday, its serenity was shattered in a moment of devastating violence. The day began unremarkably in the, for the visitors to Port Arthur. Families, tourists, and history enthusiasts roamed the grounds, soaking in the rich tapestry of Australia's colonial past. 
a few issues of colonial past, but anyway, among them was mm, Martin yes, Bryant. Yes. Mm, indeed. Among them was Martin Bryant, a 28-year-old local with a troubled history. And what unfolded next would become one of the deadliest shooting sprees in the world. So, right there. Mm, um, no, no, stop there. Oh. Do that last sentence again, because it looked like to my ears, it sounded like you said the deadliest shitting spree. It, it like, is not 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 as not as a he, joke. It generally he, sounded he, like that. He had violently violent diarrhea at the time. Um, okay. No, no, no. Legit. It actually, it legit sounded like you said. Like um yeah shitting spree the, 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 shitting spree yeah it, they literally yeah I don't know I'm not making a joke like seriously it did <laughs> it did man you might want to run that back again okay just that, uh, just that that last paragraph or whatever okay what uh, <laughs> you can throw me off now what unfolded Sorry. next that's right no no it's good what unfolded next would become one of the deadliest shooting sprees in the world better. Good man, good man. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, it literally, it's like you said, shit and spree. Sorry, yeah. man, I didn't want to interrupt. No, no, I'm, I'm leaving this all in. It's, 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 it's part of the <laughs> part of the process. Um, <laughs> wow, how how insensitive are we? Yeah, shitting sprees. Um, <laughs> okay, I should so, laugh then. Fuck. <laughs> but uh, I thought it'd be. It's. I did a little bit of research in relation to Mr. Bryant, so I thought I'd uh, we'd cover off to find out the reasons why, and then we'll cover off the incident because the incident is. Pretty straightforward, um, for want of a better word. Um, but all of the stuff leading up to it is a little bit curly, which I didn't even realize. All the stuff I'm doing the research on, at least it, it it's not explains it, but at least it goes towards um, having some sort of reasons why. Um, Martin, yeah. Martin Bryant was born on May 7th, 1967 in Hobart, Tasmania. His childhood was marked by behavioral difficulties and social challenges. And from a young age, Brian exhibited signs of intellectual disability and emotional instability. His IQ was reportedly measured at 66, indicating... Oh, wow. Yeah. Remember, Forrest Gump was 75. Yeah, yeah. And that boy could dance, um, indicating significant <laughs> cognitive impairment. Um, <clears throat> so you've got a, uh, a Tasmanian gentleman with an IQ of 66 with a few behavioral difficulties. And this is not the only half of it. He's, he wasn't just dumb. He was, um, or intellectually disabled. He was cooked. Um, yeah. and Brian's yeah, and, Bri and, 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 and a time as well where like, you know, mm. yeah, now, now if you like, you know, if, if someone that had that IQ now, there'd be a hell of a lot of support services available. But back when he was born or when he was growing up in the what the sixties and seventies, yeah, there was no such thing as support for that. No, so, not at all. You know that you know, like you're saying, it's it's a thing that contributes towards the reason why some things may or may not have occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, Bryant, as you can imagine, struggled in school, facing bullying and social isolate social isolation due to his developmental delays and unusual behaviour. His parents, Morris and Carleen Bryant. That's an Australian name, isn't it? Found it yeah, difficult. Yeah. Yeah, Carlene um, found it difficult to manage his needs and behaviour, like we just talked about. And despite their their efforts, Martin remained a troubled child, a troubled and withdrawn child, and often engaging in erratic and sometimes violent behaviour. Um, throughout his life, my, uh, start again. Throughout his life, Martin Bryant exhibited numerous red flags indicating severe psychological issues. He was diagnosed with Asperger's, which obviously is a form of autism on the spectrum, characterized by difficulties in social interactions, restricted and repetitive, repetitive patterns of behavior. Additionally, there were signs of psych psychopathy, including a lack of empathy, manipulative behavior, and an inclination towards violence. Mm. Bryant's psychological issues were compounded by fascination with firearms, and he had massed collections of weapons and developed an obsession with violent fantasies, which, uh, spoiler alert, <coughs> he meticulously planned and ultimately acted upon during the Port Arthur Massacre. Um, Bryant's relationship with his father was particularly strained. Morris Bryant, who ran a small family farm, reportedly struggled with depression and was deeply concerned about Martin's future, and tragically, Morris uh, Bryant died by suicide in 1993, which had a profound yeah, which had a profound impact on Martin, and the loss further destabilized an already fragile and mental state. Another significant figure in Bryant's life was Helen Harvey, a reclusive heiress who befriended who befriended. Oh, another significant figure in Bryant's life was he, uh, Helen Harvey, a reclusive. Arius, who befriended him in his early 20s. Now, I didn't know about this person. I just knew that what 
um, Martin Bryant did at the tail end. I didn't realize this was part mm. of it, but um, Helen Mary Elizabeth Harvey was an heiress to a substantial fortune stemming from her family's business, the Tattersall Lottery Company. Born to wealth, uh, Helen led an uncon- unconventional and reclusive life. She lived with her elderly mother in a large mansion in Newtown, which is a suburb of Hobart in Tasmania. Um, Helen met Martin in the late 1980s when she was in, he was in his early 20s. Their relationship was unusual and became a significant aspect of Bryant's life. She provided companionship uh, to Martin, who struggled with social interactions and had, he had few friends. Uh, and despite their considerable age difference, I think, I think she was in her 50s at the time, they shared a mutual bond rooted in their eccentricities and social isolation. So turns out that Martin Bryant, as much as he, he had no... Uh, filter to the point where he didn't realize that people were bullying him. He didn't realize that there was mm. a problem with him. He used to turn out, apparently he, he's purchased like a a light blue crushed velvet suit and used to wear crocodile, um, crocodile, green crocodile shoes out, like crocodile skin shoes and just look like completely, yeah. especially for Hobart and like Tasmania in the 19th, as you said, even through the 1980s, having that sort of thing, he's a standout, like the bulldog's ball. So, um, uh, Helen also provided um, wealth um, and had a subst- another substantial impact on Bryant. She indulged his every whim and provided him with financial support, which allowed him to pursue his interests, including his fascination with firearms. She bought him a yellow Volvo and allowed him to live, uh, as you do, and allowed him to live in a grand manner but far beyond his previous means of his dad's after his dad's death. Um, after the death of Helen's mother in 1990, Helen's health began to decline because she'd be in her well, almost late 50s, by almost 60s at that st- stage. And Bryant took on the role of caretaker. And through their relationship dynamics, they were more complex than a typical parent, sorry, patient caregiver relationship. Uh, Martin moved into a mansion and they lived together until her death. Um, and this is, leads perfectly on to the fact that when Helen when when Helen Harvey died. So Helen Harvey died in a car accident in October 1992. She was kill, killed when her car veered off the road and hit a tree, and Bryant was in the car at the time and suffered injuries, but he survived. Her death had a profound effect on him. So losing one of the few people who understand and supported him left him, again, further off selected um, from the world. Of note, though, was the fact that witnesses and acquaintances mentioned that Martin had a habit of grabbing the steering wheel whilst Helen was driving, causing erratic and unsafe driving conditions. This behaviour likely contributed to the car accident in October 1992, which she was ultimately killed in. Um, although the exact details of the accident remain somewhat unclear, Bryant's presence in the car and his known behaviour raised concerns about his potential involvement. Um Following Helen's death, Bryant inherited her entire estate, including substantial assets and the mansion in Newtown, and his sudden influx of wealth and property gave him financial means to continue his lifestyle without any checks or balances on his behaviour. However, it also left him without the companionship and support that Helen had provided, deepening his sense of loneliness and isolation. So now we have the um, the the starter to what occurred. <coughs> Let's go into what actually occurred. Mm. Can, um, I, can I can I yeah. can I jump in on on that? Yeah, um, I totally forgot that about the the start of um his life mm. and what led you know the 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 things that led up to it. If you check your um, if you check the uh, the front bum mm. messenger, um, have a look at the picture I just sent. I'm not going to drop it yet. Mm. Yep. Right. I, is is this going to come up in your topic? No, 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 no. Right. So, um, I don't know whether to bring it up now or bring it up. No, later, bring it up now, man. But up now. have you have you watched that? No, no. It it is absolutely brilliant. Oh, really? So, uh, so me, uh, we've watched it. Um, so, um, so when Davros is describing um martin bryant through his life and the events that led up to it um there's a film that came out in 2021 called nitrum or nitram and um, i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right mm. um it is the dramatization of bryant oh. and him growing up and him actually meeting helen and it, it's it's like it's a long movie you'll see like it's an hour 52 but mm. it really really dramatizes that whole everything you've just described 
Ah, right. Like, okay. In, in, yeah, like in fine detail. It's, it's really, really good. And then it just like goes to the end. So if you get a chance, watch that. It was oh, no. on Netflix. I, I don't know where it is now, um, whether it's still on, but that is an absolutely fantastic movie. And you're like, Davros is describing the story of it. And I'm like, I've fucking seen this in a film. I've seen this yeah. in a film and I can't remember where. So I had to Google it and then I found it. So yeah, um, it's a movie called Night Tram. Yeah, uh, N I T R A M. Which, which is Martin Beckwoods. Oh, fuck. So it is. Yeah. I, I fucking didn't even realize that. Oh, hmm. there you go. Yeah. See, the thing is, we, we'd have just seen it on Netflix and read the description and went, oh, fucking hell, poor Arthur. Right. Let's watch that. Yeah. So there you, there you go. Uh, worth a watch if you have or haven't seen it yet. Watch it again if you have. Wicked. There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a, definitely give it a watch. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get let's get into the shit bit. Yeah, yeah it is the shit bit. Um, yeah. So Mr. Martin Bryant began his rampage at the Broad Arrow Cafe around lunchtime on the, I'll say it again, on April 28th, 1996, Martin Bryant began his rampage at the Broad Era Cafe around lunchtime. Did I say lunchtime twice? I'll start again. Yeah, I'll start again. At the Broad Arrow Cafe at lunchtime, lunchtime. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) On Sunday, April the 28th, 1996, Martin Bryant began his rampage at the Broad Arrow Cafe. Armed with a Colt AR-15 and a semi-automatic rifle, he opened fire indiscriminately, killing 12 people and wounding 10 within the first few minutes. The suddenness and brutality of the attack left the survivors in shock and disbelief, and the echoes of the gunfire reverberated through the site, creating chaos and panic as people scrambled to find safety. After the initial assault, Bryant moved through the historic site, continuing his lethal killing spree. He killed people in the parking lot, along tourist paths, and even pursued fleeing fleeing victims. By the end of the day, 35 people were dead and 23 others were injured. The randomness of the violence made it even more terrifying. No one was safe, and the serene backdrop backdrop of Port Arthur contrasted grotesquely with the bloodshed. The massacre didn't end in Port Arthur. Brian fled the scene. Bryant fled the scene, taking hostages and eventually barricading himself inside a guest house, where he was apprehended the following day after setting the building on fire. And his capture, his capture brought an end to an immediate threat, but the repercussions of his actions would ripple across Australia for years to come, which is what Jamie was alluding to at the beginning. Yes. After his capture on April 29, 1996, Martin Bryant was placed under heavy security and underwent psychiatric evaluation. During his trial, Bryant showed little remorse and often appeared detached from the gravity of his actions. The legal proceedings were swift, and given the overwhelming evidence and Bryant's omissions, sorry, the legal proceedings were swift, given the overwhelming evidence and Bryant's own guilty admissions. On November 22, 1996, Bryant was sentenced to 35 life sentences without the possibility of parole for each of his victims, and additionally, he received another 1,035 years for other crimes committed during the massacre. This would ensure that Martin Bryant would spend the remainder of his life in prison. (laughs) I got it sticky in my throat. Um, Y'all good? Yeah, man. Just getting drier than nuns. Um, The impact of the... (laughs) Sorry, the, sorry. The, the impact of the Port Arthur massacre was profound and immediate. The Australian public, horrified by the sheer scale of the violence, demanded change, and the government responded swiftly and decisively. Just 12 days after the massacre, the then Prime Minister John Howard announced a comprehensive plan to reform the nation's gun laws. The National Firearms Agreement, or the NFA, was introduced, which aimed to reduce the likelihood of such tragedy ever happening again. The NFA would include a ban on all semi-automatic rifles and shotguns, a national firearms registry, a mandatory buyback program where the government purchased and destroyed over 650,000 firearms. That's a lot. Uh, This move was... That's a lot of guns. That's a lot of piao piao. Um, This move was controversial, controversial and faced significant opposition from some quarters, namely the rural community and the sporting communities for obvious reasons. However, most Australians supported the reforms and recognised the necessity of preventing future atrocities. The Port Arthur massacre not only reshaped Australia's gun laws, but also prompted a cultural shift. The nation became more aware of potential dangers of firearms proliferation and more committed to preventing gun violence. 
The reforms have been credited with significantly reducing gun-related deaths in Australia, in both in terms of homicides and suicides. The country's approach has been often cited as a successful model for gun control worldwide, which is why, again, at the beginning, I talked about the fact that this particular incident gets shoved down um, the throats of Americans whenever that something happens. Mm, mm. <laughs> Beyond the legislative beyond the legislative changes, we must remember that the humans cost of the tragedy. The victims of the Port Arthur massacre were mothers, fathers, children, and friends. Their lives were cut short in a moment of senseless violence, leaving behind grief-stricken families and communities. Each name on the list of the dead represents a story abruptly ended and a future never realized. The story of Martin Bryant is a stark reminder of the potential extreme the potential for extreme violence in individuals with untreated mental health issues and access to firearms. His life from a troubled childhood to being involved in one of the most deadliest mass shooting underscores the importance of early intervention, comprehensive mental health care, and stringent gun control measures. Now, Martin Bryant is still alive and currently incarcerated at the Risden Prison Complex in Hobart in Tasmania. His life in prison has been marked by isolation and strict security measures to ensure both his safety and that of the prison staff and other inmates. The Port Arthur Massacre, as I've already said, prompted Australia to take decisive action, leading to significant reforms in gun control and public safety policies. And while Bryant remains a figure, while Bryant remains a figure of infamy, the legacy of his actions has led to positive changes aimed at preventing further, tra further tragedies. In sharing this story, we honour the memory of the victims and acknowledge the resilience of the survivors and their families. We also celebrate the collective action taken by a nation determined to turn a moment of profound darkness into a catalyst for positive change. The Port Arthur Massacre is a sobering chapter in Australian history, but also a testament to the power of unity and to potential for progress, the potential for progress in the face of tragedy. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Nice. Very quick, nice, quick fire, yeah. but no, that that was good, man. That was really good. Um, yeah. I, th heaps, I think that's one yeah. of the, yeah. yeah there's, I mean, there's yeah, there's lots of avenues and approaches you can take. Yeah. Um, I genuinely didn't know he's still alive. That's mm. I don't know. yeah. There was there was uh, a slight like, sixty minutes interview um, a while ago where they went to try and speak to him, and he's still as mad as a fucking hatter. He's trying to kill himself a yeah. couple of times, and but see, if you've got someone with that, let alone the fact of the. PTSD for him shooting up the place and causing all the problems. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, like a problem, proper untreated mental health. He might be getting as much lithium as he wants in the prison, but mm. that's only going to do so much, especially if he's that cooked for that long. It's a, um, mm. um, but yeah, I'm not sure what happened to his wealth. Like I know, I don't think he's got no kids or anything. So all that wealth that's sitting there from Helen Harvey, I don't know whether that's been like sold off to go towards giving money to the, the family of the victims, I'm not sure because normally yeah, that's what happens. Yeah. But uh, judging by what she had a significant amount of cash, so but no, that's yeah. that's the Port yeah, Arthur massacre. So, um, and yeah, I'll, um, yeah, Night Tram, the film, definitely watch it if you get a chance, man. It's really, really good. I've just said it's, it's on Stan, it, so I have to go and watch it. Oh, was it Stan? I th see, I thought we watched it on Netflix for some reason. It might have been Netflix. I mean, it was it was a while ago, like it possibly was in the old house. So, ah right yeah so two yeah. uh, twenty twenty one came out oh oh no no twenty one would have been here it yeah. feels like a long time ago but yeah it was yeah I do recall it was a while back they've done a good job I'm just looking at some of the yeah. screenshots of the guy mm. in it and he's done a good job like uh, mm. casting the bloke who played because um to plays Mr Bryant and 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 you mm. feel again I'll throw some pictures up when we do all the promotion for the episode but. Um, he's a weird looking bloke. The yeah. Mr. Bryant is a weird looking bloke, smiling at the random places, and yeah, it's yeah, it's it's an interesting topic. Obviously, it was terrible what happened, and um, and I've watched some sort of dramatizations of what occurred. Literally, the people out in a park, and that he just opened up without any care for anything, and that's obviously the mental health, yeah. and that's the um, the Asperger's like completely untreated Asperger's, especially during the it was nineties, but all that leading up for twenty years prior just mm. unloading an AR-15 onto everybody. And the same thing happened with the Christchurch shooting um, yes, where, yes, yeah, yes. so Jacinda Ardern just banned all military-style semi-automatics as a result of it mm. uh, instantly. 
um, and assist. And I, the, I like how the the Australian people like because I think I think Jim Jeffries makes a kind of joke on it, but it's mm. what he kind of says is kind of true as well. It's like the Australian people went like the government went right. We should probably take the guns off, yo. We don't want this to happen again. The Australian people went, ah, oh, yeah, you know what? Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We probably don't want this to happen again. That was a bit of fucking shit. You know, mm. I mean, it, you know, it kind of. But ultimately, it's it's good to see that the nation decided. Yeah, yeah, they yeah they're probably right. Yeah, let's just nip this in the bud. Yeah, as it stands. Um, yeah. One thing, one thing I thought about. I I can't remember the exact incident. Um, it was in Australia. I can't remember if what state it was in. I think it was over in New South Wales somewhere. Um, ultimately, I, it was within the last. It was it since I'd been in Australia. Hmm. Um, so within the last 10 years, um, the guy had went nuts. He, I think he'd shot a few people in or shot someone in an incident prior. And then when the police in whatever state it was went to arrest him, he pulled like, he, or he pointed like a loaded shotgun at him. The police returned fire and killed him and he died. Yeah. But I, I remember the, um, I think it was his mum. Uh, went on the news and she'd done a really good like news thing obviously she's really upset at the fact oh fuck my son's just like been killed by the police mm. which you know as a mother you would kind of expect that you know oh my son's been killed by the police like my son's been killed yeah but she she also verbalized the fact that you know um that she was so sorry about her son's actions but they were also his actions and you know not reflective of them as a family but they also wish the public to respect that fact as well. Like, yeah. you know, and I thought, you know what? You're fucking good on you for going out and saying, you know, look, this affects us too. Yeah. Our family members also been taken away from us, despite the fact that they've done this awful thing, you know, acknowledging the, acknowledging the thing they've done wrong, but then equally just saying, you know, like fucking, you know, this is still our family member that died as well. Yeah. yeah you, know, so I thought, you know, you know, and I remember watching that. I was like, you know what? Yeah, fair enough. Like that's, you know, she's not come out and said, "Oh, the public killed him and he was fucking nuts and this and that." No, she's a, she's acknowledged the fact that something horrible happened. Yeah, he's well, yeah, he's done bad things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, uh, I'd yes, say we've been a bit so. of a quick fire. We've obviously we've been talking shit, so I don't know how long this this thing's going to be when it comes out. But obviously, we've been talking for the last couple of hours now, talking shit, and we're going to go and play some video games because fucking at why least not? three at least three inches. That's right. That but, was a joke um, to two. That was a joke to two sentences ago. By the way, just so you know, <laughs> I don't know how long this thing's going to be when it comes out. At least three inches. Put it back in. Um, that was a joke at <laughs> the beginning. Um, but um, yeah. So we'll, again, we're going to we're trying to do more bits and pieces. We're like I said we're not going to say sorry for not putting more content out. We obviously shit gets in the way and real life comes and kicks us in the teeth. Work and everything else thrown and then we throw it out where we can. Um, we still talk to people on Instagram and say hello. So obviously there's Erica still out there listening. So hello, Erica. Hello, everybody else. Hey. Um, we said, all, as I said, as Jamie alluded to during the middle of this podcast, we have lots of ideas and they're all written down, good to go. We're just, we're just slack as all hell to actually get them done. So it's um, we've, yeah, we've got even got bloody like video ideas we've been trying to get done, but hey, we haven't got those done either. So just be with it. And yeah. some of them are maybe quite funny. Uh, well, they're funny to us, at least. And they were funny when I thought of them fucking nuts deep into a bottle of Bacardi. So. Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway, shall we sign this thing off, Jamie? And um... let's, let's sign it off and crank up the Valheim. I fancy uh, being a Viking for uh, a bit. Indeed. It's going to be Vikings and eat some meat. Drink some meat and eat some meat. Naked. Totally the, naked. So totally, totally naked. I don't know how to quit you. Anyway, I'll leave it to everyone. Catch you later. Bye. Oh, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. That's all, folks.